Okay, welcome back. You're listening to the final segment of the first hour of the Corland Economics Report. I'm Al Corland, and I appreciate you joining me. Got the silver guru on the line right now, David Morgan. David's a very, very interesting guy, and you know I say this about most of my guests, but you know, and I mean it about all of them. But David's a good friend. I've known him for ten or fifteen years, and you know I respect, truly respect, what he has to say. Okay, having said that, uh, David, I want to address three issues with you. Number one, I want to talk a little bit about the price of silver and the direction it's going in right now. We are down, obviously, significantly, forty uh, percent from uh, from our not too recent high of close to 50 bucks. Uh, on Friday, uh, silver closed, if I'm not mistaken, around $30. I want to talk, focus on that because that's really your area of expertise. Uh, I then want to discuss a little bit about the political events going on around the world and how you think that's affecting the price of silver. First of all, here we are, 30 bucks. You concerned? Yeah, somewhat. I mean, no one likes to see, you know, uh, any market that they're bullish on uh, pull back that significantly. But regardless, uh, we went parabolic uh, in the silver market. And as it was going north of 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, the whole way up, I was being very cautious, optimistic, but cautious, telling people, don't put all you have in the silver market. It's going to correct. And on the trading service that I provide for our members, I called the top around the 48 mark. It went slightly higher. I love selling in the strength. It's always best to leave a little bit of room for the next guy. And then it's come off. When it came off, it did uh, quite a sharp decline. It actually touched the 33 level. And it's been consolidating between 33 at the low and 40-ish, 42 at the high for several months. But then at what it's taken place very recently, as you said, Al, is that we've got this uh, correction in both silver, I wouldn't say even correction, but this waterfall sell-off in both silver and gold, and is substantially lower than it was just a few weeks ago. So yeah, it is a concern, but the main thrust of my thinking is have the fundamental fact, <clears throat> excuse me, have the fundamental facts changed or have they not? You know, in my humble opinion, I don't think the fundamental facts have changed at all. You know, we're in the perfect storm, I think, for precious metals. I mean, I'm not a technician, David. You're pr much more of a technician than I am. You know, and, and Trader Raj talks about the fundamentals of silver, or I'm sorry, the technical aspects of silver all the time. But I have to tell you, from a fundamental standpoint right now, it's the perfect storm. Absolutely, Al. It has not done anything but get better fundamentally. Look, what I've said over and over, and, I, and it's only actual fact, is that the global financial system has never been in such a precarious situation as it now is. And because of that fact, people are uncertain of what to do. And during times of uncertainty, they go to the one asset class that is absolutely certain that has no confidence or trust issues, and that's gold and silver. Those two things are in and of themselves trustworthy and they build confidence. And even though these metals have gotten smashed lately, I think it'll take some time to rebuild, but fundamentally, it's a great time for someone that's new to the market to get involved. I wouldn't say buy everything that you want now because it could possibly go lower than it is today, but nonetheless, it's smart to get in here. That's what a professional would do. They take advantage of a beat up like this and they would start to accumulate. That's what I'm suggesting to everybody. I would agree with you 100%. Now is a great time to accumulate. You know, and, and, and here's a good example coming from a personal experience that I just had five days ago. I was up in Vancouver, British Columbia, walking down West Pender, got to the corner of West Pender and Howe. As you probably know, there's a big bullion dealer right there. There were 100 people in line waiting to do something. And, and I found out, I keep bringing this up, but, but I found out from some of our mutual friends up there that of that 100 people, the vast majority, Dave, were buying silver. That's what I've got, and I've talked to uh, not all of my contacts, that would take too long, but several of the wholesalers and the larger retailers, and people, again, as in the 2008 financial crisis, are coming in and buying. Uh, very few sellers. In fact, I talked to one mid-level retail dealer, and she told me that the last few days, no one has sold silver to her back they're only buying so we may get in a situation similar to 2008 bottom in silver where we see two prices 
we see the paper price of silver and we see the retail price substantially higher. Remember back in that time, silver got under $9 briefly, but the best you could do was like $12.50, $13.50. There was like a 20, 30% premium if you wanted to buy any retail product, meaning silver rounds, uh, silver eagles, silver maples, 100 ounce bars, 10 ounce bars, anything like that. You had to pay a substantial premium to get physical silver. You could get it off the exchange at the mark to market price. In other words, the price that they set. And actually, I did so myself. I took uh, 3,000 ounces at the time around the $9 level. But that was the only type of silver, commercial bar form, that you could get for that price. Everything else had a substantial uh, increase premium on it because it was scarce. It was hard to get. Got a question for you. You know, a week ago, a little over a week ago, actually, the uh, COMEX raised the margin requirements on gold and silver. I found that to be really, really interesting given the fact that the price of both commodities was going down. Now, uh, a number of my listeners commented on our blog, David, and they said, you know, here's a good example of giving some, some you know, firepower to Bill Murphy and the Gata guys. And I noticed you have a poster there behind you, uh, you know, giving more firepower to them uh, in terms of the theory that, that the price of gold and silver is, in fact, manipulated. I don't understand when the price of those commodities were both going down and going down precipitously. I don't understand why COMEX at that time raised the requirements, the uh, margin requirements, by 21%. Any comments? Well, yeah. I mean... The, the CFTC, uh, the COMEX, is it's really the CME these days, but they have a propensity to, in any commodity, any time there are violent moves up or down, to increase the margins. And this is a violent move to the downside. Now, obviously, it favors the shorts. And from my most objective view, and of course, I am biased. I am for honest money. I am for an honest financial system. I am pro gold and silver. Nonetheless, with all of my biases, if you read the rules as objectively as you can, they favor the shorts in almost every case. So if you're going to increase margin requirements on the way down, anyone that's long is going to lose equity. In other words, you might have bought silver, for example, $25 and had a pretty good position all the way up and watched it go from 50 all the way down to 33 and then get this, this waterfall decline we've talk, we're talking about. And all of a sudden, you still have some good equity, except now you get a margin increase and you're long and you have to pony up more dollars to maintain your position. All of a sudden, that equity goes away. So, you know, I, I don't make the rules. I And in fact, I stress this. You know, if you are in the futures markets, you better know doggone well what you're doing. It is not the place for most people. It's only the place for professionals or people of high net worth that have risk capital. If you don't want to lose any money, stay out of the futures markets. Nonetheless, you do get the best price there, especially if you can stand for delivery. But uh, it's a tough game. You're, it's, a, it's the toughest game out there, really. And I don't advocate it for hardly anyone. There are a few people that can do well at it, but the vast majority of people do not. Dave, I got to tell you, you know, I agree with you 100%, but I would take it a little bit lower on the food chain when I say I don't advocate anybody being in the resource sector that doesn't have a high degree of acumen in our industry because it is very, very cyclical and there are certain things that you must be aware of, you must have a working knowledge of if you're going to be involved in this industry. The only exception, and, I, and I've told all my listeners this for years and years now, the only exception is if you have a flair for it or if you have an interest, I guess I should say, in it, but you choose not to become extremely well educated in it, get yourself a really good investment advisor who's got a proven track record because our industry is not for the faint-hearted, David. Yeah, I agree. In fact, and I hopefully not backing up on what I said about futures, but you're right. In general, I've said many times on your show and others over the years that if you cannot take wild swings, don't get in this market at all. I mean, physically bought and paid for silver or gold, even though I think that's probably the best thing you can buy for the fundamental reasons we talked about earlier. Nonetheless, the price movement can be very, very strong at times, up and down. And if you can't handle that, then, you know, keep your money in, uh, you know, T-bills or something. I mean, I, I, I don't advocate that personally. That's not what I do personally. What, what I'm saying is, uh, just backing you up, Al, look, a lot of people, they get in, they've never invested before. This is really not the place to start, believe me. If you've never invested and you don't know what it looks like when the market goes against you and you can't handle that, uh, this is not the place to start.
No, it's not for the faint-hearted. It's for very, very sophisticated investors. You know, and I've gotten to know 100 or 200 or so of our listeners pretty well through our blog, David, and, and that's out of 60,000 people who listen to it. So I'm looking for more of you folks to comment. But, but I do want to say most of the people who listen to the Corland Economics Report are pretty, pretty sophisticated investors. And you know what? That's the, really the only inter- uh, audience that I'm interested in because I'm too old to be a school teacher. I want to talk with people who really know what they are doing. Okay, there you have it. Wrapping up the first hour of the weekend edition of the Corland Economics Report with David Morgan. David, thank you so much, buddy. Mm-hmm.